Hello everyone, and welcome to Best Replays Plays of the Week. I am Luke Nella. Today we have an unkillable KV-4, a pattern who won't be trapped, and tank destroyers making heroic last stands. Let's take a look! This week we'll start with an indestructible wall of Soviet steel. One of the nicknames of the KV-4 is the Terminator, and it's easy to see why. Ben Sinobi is going to show us how much punishment this tank can take. The standard battle was fought at the Mountain Pass on the EU server cluster. The KV is by far the heaviest machine on the field, so Ben decides to tank for the whole team. The battle starts, and he takes the Steel Beast forward to claim the central position. This is where you go if you want to take on the whole enemy team. As expected, a torrent of fire is unleashed upon the KV. Finishing off the Type 58 leaves the tank at a bad angle and results in a punishing hit to the ammo rack. The armor is holding for now, but the repair kit and more than a third of the hit points are gone. Ben angles the hull and fires his gun when he can. Ouch! There's no armor thick enough to take a shell from the KV-2 howitzer. Some of the enemies are starting to figure out weak spots. Maybe adjusting the angle of the hull would help. The incoming fire just seems to intensify. Ben takes care to angle the turret for maximum deflection when he's not taking a shot. The KV-4 holds on, but occasionally a shell punches through. The Tiger II decides to take point, and not a moment too soon. There are limits even for the KV-4. Ben uses the opportunity to finish off the dangerous AMX Heavy. Adjust the angle again? Actually, it seems like the battle has moved on, and the Allied base is open to attack. It's time to leave this position. This is bad. Ben lands a solid hit, but the light tank will make short work of the engine deck. A little help. Phew, thanks T-21, that was a close one. Back on the front line and here's the troublesome KV-2 from before. Die! The T-21 puts in the final nail and sets the score to 8-8. 98 HP with the Amarak and engine damage. Plenty still to do. Wow, taking shells from an IS-3 is pretty risky, but it sure helps the team finish off that powerful enemy. The situation on the riverbed has been sorted out, and Ben rolls forward to meet the remaining enemies head on. Brilliant angling on the bridge makes every shell bounce off. And the Super Pershing is gone. Ben keeps angling the Holland turret, pushing on towards the T-34-3. Allies turn up, and eventually the enemy has nowhere to go. The remaining Cromwell has no taste for a 4-on-1, so the team end it with a capture. Victory! Ben Sonobi is our steel wall of the week. The damage tank is impressive, and the Holland turret angling was a joy to see. Excellent work! Most snipers prefer a bolt-action rifle, but sometimes a faster rate of fire can come in handy. Legrand 73 demonstrates this as he deals death from afar with the T-54E1. The map is Westfield, and the standard battle is fought on the EU cluster. A sniper needs to be at the right place at the right time, and Legrand sprints up the hillside. Just in time. One, two, three, four. An entire magazine is emptied into the side of a Tiger II. It takes only seconds, and then it's time to tuck into cover and change position. Dashing closer now to ambush another Tiger. This time three shots are enough, it's a clean professional hit. A pitch battle is being waged behind the hill. With an autoloader, it's very tempting to poke out and unload into an enemy. But is this wise for the sniper? No, that was a bad idea. Four serious hits taken, and one of his own shells bounced. He is lucky to survive the autoloader madness. The Grand turns around and goes back to his role as a sniper. This is more like it. Long range and an unsuspecting enemy. Two shots and it's gone. Not wanting to reload just yet, Legrand looks for a target for the other two shells. Firing through the garden wall makes one of them miss, but his second one scores a satisfying hit on the T-34-3. Reload done, and here's the next victim. The T-44 is mostly in cover, but a sniper doesn't need a big target. Once again, two shots are enough. That E-75 is threatening an ally and advancing on the base. Better do something about it. The ally gets himself killed anyway, but the E-75 takes serious damage. It's now 2 versus 3. No time for the E-75. This WZ-111 needs to be taken care of. The remaining ally does a suicidal charge at the heavy, but luckily, Legrand has time to finish the enemy off. Two to go. The E-75 is capturing the base, but this medium tank is a more immediate threat. The sniper makes short work of it, and then it's time to deal with the last enemy. Luckily, there's plenty of time for a reload. There's no room for a mistake here. The ally makes himself useful by not only spotting the enemy, but resetting the capture. Reload's done, let's go! Full speed down the slope, 
and the E75 never had a chance. Victory! Autoloader or not, it's how you use the weapon that counts. Well played, Legrand 73, you are our Sniper of the Week! Now it's time to kick back and enjoy big guns and heavy machinery. This week's top gun features a player called Chaki and his Jagdpanzer E100. This standard battle takes place on Inst, on the Southeast Asian server. The battle starts and Chaki takes the rolling fortress west, looking for enemy. A T-54 drives straight into the gun sight, but amazingly the shell bounces off the cockroach. Was that a training round? Adding insult to injury, the TD suffers a massive hit as it turns away. But there's no time to cry about that, the next shell is ready and the E-100 is a juicy target. Boom! Next victim is the 103. It's a solid hit, but the situation is getting grim. It looks like the enemies are swarming unopposed into the capture circle. Score is 5-7, the capture is halfway, and it sure looks like a target-rich environment. Let's see what this machine can do. Boom! Did the bat think it was safe behind those railroad cars? The smaller autoloader is just a snack, but it does reduce the cap from 90%. Maneuvering is getting tricky, with enemies all around him. Chucky times it well, and the 103 is in his sights as the reload finishes. Third kill. The bat charges in, but Chucky is on the ball. The ram seems to confuse the autoloader, and it dies without doing any damage. Fourth kill. This time, the enemy escapes before the reload is done, and now the big TD is in trouble. The Agpanzer turns very slowly for this kind of fight, and Chucky can only watch as his remaining allies get taken out. A hasty auto-aim shot misses the T-62A, and it looks like this is the end. The AMX 1390 circles behind, and the medium tank closes in for the kill. Amazingly, the hole turns around just in time, and the killing shot fails to penetrate. Chucky pulls the trigger as soon as the gun is ready, and the T-62 blows up. Five kills, but can he survive the AMX again? Turning with the damaged engine is painfully slow, and you know the artillery is looking for an opening. Where did it go? There! Let's finish this! Chucky waits in ambush, and yes! Great shot! The AMX is gone, and the enemy are down to artillery. Six kills. Normally, artillery hunting is fairly trivial on a city map, but this is a Jagdpanzer E100 with a damaged engine. Any splash from those tier 10 arties will kill it. Let's see how it goes. The first arty misses its one chance and becomes the seventh kill. The second one is a long drive away, but it doesn't even get a shell off. Victory with eight kills. Very good maneuvering there, compensating for the weaknesses of the vehicle and making full use of its strengths. Top gun of the week, well deserved. A defender doesn't let the enemy steal the victory. They defend the base, the artillery, and their allies. Almighty Blighty brings out the AT-15A and shows us how it's done. The standard battle is fought on an EU server, and the map is Arctic region. Blighty heads south and takes the vanguard position. The heavy armor of the British TD holds perfectly, and he fires shell after shell into the enemy ranks. The Black Prince tries to retreat, but there is no escape. A rival TD pokes its head out and is easily destroyed. The field is full of targets, and even the KV-3 cannot withstand Blighty's relentless hammer blows. The assault is going decently, but a defender keeps an eye on the bigger picture. The northern front has collapsed, and not only is the base under threat, but the whole team is getting enveloped. Blighty turns around and heads back, just in time to save the Allied artillery piece. A brief duel takes care of the offending light tank. Reaching the top of the climb, he turns around and gets busy. Blighty scores several hits, but it's too late for the team. Within moments, he's the last man standing. One against six, and a slow-moving TD against maneuverable tanks. The defender doesn't hesitate as he takes to the high ground. It's time for a heroic last stand. The T-3485 is the first enemy to show its face. Blighty turns it into scrap before any of its allies have time to get involved. The Lux is next to go. So far, it's like a shooting gallery. As long as they hang back there, this is the TD's fight to win. The capture warning goes off, but Blighty is reluctant to abandon his position. He pretends to drive off and lures the enemy into charging. Another medium tank pays the price, but the heavy KV manages to get close. Now he really has to come out and deal with the capture. The KV-85 fails to protect the Kappa, and Blighty's quick charge ends the threat with a single shot. Two versus one now, and the defender with seven kills hasn't taken a single point of damage. Of course, that couldn't last forever, but the hit is worth it for taking out the remaining med tank. That just leaves one. Blighty drives out to meet the enemy in open battle, 
but the heavy is nowhere to be found. He turns around and eventually comes face to face with the enemy. Even premium rounds have a hard time punching through and he takes a lot of damage. Then the enemy shows its side and it's all over. Victory! Very nice work, Defender. Nine kills, a pile of medals, and defending the base against six enemies. Congratulations! The final battle of the day takes place in Stalingrad on the Asia server. Franking drives the M46 pattern, giving a crucial contribution towards victory. Franklin has brought along a platoon mate, but they go their separate ways from the start. The prototype is probably too thick-skinned to pierce from here. Okay, this isn't happening, maybe from a different spot. Franklin changes position and takes cautious shots from cover for a while. It's time to move closer. The pattern is a medium tank and not a TD. More damage is dealt, but no kills yet. So far, it's been a cautious game. Hello there, first kill. Franklin stays to help in the fight and soon enough takes out a second victim. The game has been even for a long time, but now his allies are dying left and right. Franklin finds himself alone on the front line and decides it's time to be somewhere else. He tries to flank the enemies, but gets spotted on the way. Allies are rapidly running out. Before long, it's just him and Olivia against five enemies. How does he get them without getting killed? Okay, it's now or never. The big TD has to die, and fast. The charioteer goes down, but the friendly Livia is also gone. It's one versus four, and they've got him trapped here. Maybe he can finish these two off before the rest get here. The T-29 is easy. Bang! Nope, that took too long. It's three versus one. Here and now. Watch this though. How do you win an almost impossible fight? Take out the IS-3 while maneuvering against two other enemies. Then use the IS-6 for cover against the object. Dance around, forcing one enemy to miss and the other to bounce its shot. Finish off the IS-6, then charge the object with perfect timing. Hug it, then cripple its track when it tries to separate and finish the job. Very nice. Let's watch the best bit again. Franklin was cautious early on, but when the game seemed lost, he came through and won the impossible looking knife fight. That's the crucial contribution of the week. Congratulations. Right, that's it for today. Clickety click on the screen to watch some older replays or some other tank related stuff. It's no problem if you don't, but you might cry a little. <laughs> <laughs>